Peter Holland, flow expert. Me, I'm just learning. And I would love to be a flow bro. If I were to have flow, I'm going Anson Carter style, baby. That's what I'm going with. You had a match against him 12 years ago. The Beast Incarnate. Brock Lesnar. I know this guy. <laughs> Hey, welcome to News You Can Use. I'm your host, Brandon Gomez. Right now, there is a murder trial ongoing in the Toronto area that has to do with senseless gun violence. On the night of December 12th, 2018, 29-year-old Jonathan Gill West was innocently sitting in his car parked at a plaza in Toronto when out of nowhere, according to police, two random 18-year-old boys entered his vehicle armed with a gun. The result? Jonathan would end up dead. Now before I give you any more details, I do need you to do a few things like subscribing to this channel, tapping that notification bell, and make sure to follow us on all of our social media. The details are in the description below. It's now been more than two years since Jonathan was taken away from his family. Jonathan, his family says, was a man who was loved. He had high ambitions. He was a story editor at TSN and was on a path to becoming a sports anchor. But that path was cut short because of senseless gun violence. I recently spoke with Jonathan's family to see how they're doing as the court trial continues into the fate of two of Jonathan's accused killers. Let's bring his family in. We'll call in Ed, Miss Grace, Justin, thank you so much for joining me here on News You Can Use. Um, I appreciate you inviting us into your home, first and foremost, under the circumstances. I would love to, I guess, start by asking, I mean, how have you all been since 2018? Um, it's been uphill. And mm -hmm. some days harder than some, and um, especially since the trial begins again, it's everything is being rehashed again, and it's it's been difficult. How about you, Justin? It's been a roller coaster ride since uh, 2018. Um, just being able to find uh, the the perpetrators really quickly was was very good, and then watching the machinery of of justice like go very slowly and hiccups and starts and stops the that's really been the the basis of our woes and then the basis of our happiness has been everybody that's reached out to us whether it's friends or family and people that don't even really know us but just was touched by Jonathan's story or knows Jonathan from from some other um, from his uh, from his work I just think that's uh, that's the stuff we're we're taking with us and keeping us uh, keeping us afloat. You know, it is a tragedy and I think it's something that shook the city to its core um, because it, it, it felt so unexpected. And from all accounts, this was an amazing guy. Miss Grace, if you don't mind, can you take me back to that night in December of how it all unfolded? Um, that was a Wednesday night. <laughs> so I, I went to the bank and then uh, something happened in the machine. I put in my car and it didn't work, so I came home. They went back out again. It was getting dark. And uh, I came home and uh, he and I, were, we used to um, text throughout the day. And the last one that he really did answer to me was at about three something. I can't remember exactly the time. But um, I did say to him something strange like, I. I wish you um, an Elijah moment today. And if you know, some people know the Bible, it means Elijah was taken up into heaven, mm -hmm. uh, suddenly, like that. So at, I got home after the second time at the bank, and I, uh, that was 7.55, I texted him, and I got no answer. And so I fell sleepy and mm -hmm. went to bed. Then I slept until one o'clock. Uh, I got up, just woke up out of my sleep, and walked over here to the window. Mm -hmm. And when I looked outside, I saw a man coming up on the step, a well-dressed dressed man, and his shoes were so clean. And I said, who is, who is this thief coming this time of the night? Good looking thief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, he started ringing the bell and knocking first, and ringing and knocking, and I couldn't answer. And um, someone was upstairs, a guest, and heard the long knocking and ringing mm -hmm. and uh, he was coming downstairs but I hid and go over to the other side and he said what's going on he checked and he said it's two of them so I hid behind here mm -hmm. 
And I said, I'm never going to open that door. And then he said, I am going to open it. And he did. And that's what happened. And I heard the news. It was, I couldn't express, I can't express to you how I felt. I was going like crazy, wild, mm -hmm. upset. Wherever I went, the officers would go with me. And if I climb up the walls, they would sit there and watch me. If I sit on the floor, they'll sit with me. I was really screaming. And I thought he was not dead and they could take me to the hospital, but he was already dead. You know, they say no parent should ever have to bury their child. Yeah. And I can't imagine that grief and that pain that you've gone through. Mm -hmm. How have you made it day by day? Where do you draw your source of strength? First from my God, by being religious and faith, having the faith to believe that it can get better, and my family and my church, they really supported me in a big way. And always they have been praying and calling, and, and that's what kept me going. But at nights, uh, it's hard. You know, it sounds like you were very close to your son, very which is amazing. Close, yeah. Can you describe him for me? Uh, so much. Um, I wrote, can I read what I write? Something yeah. that I read? Yeah? Of course. Okay. He was a gifted speaker mm. from small family. He was a small child um, and a great sense of compassion for people. He likes people, he likes bring people together. He has a, a vast knowledge of sports mm -hmm. from any kind of sports, he from sports, any country. Eh? From, yes, he was like, from small, when yeah. he was small. And he learned a lot from his brother, Justin. He tries to outdo him in things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. What do you guys like when you're younger, like watch TSN in the morning? Yeah, catch up yeah. On the highlights, was, quiz uh, each other on. We all liked all sports, mm -hmm. um, but he took it to another level. I remember uh, one of his birthdays was a. Uh, used to give each other like gag gifts. Yeah. And one I gave him was a almanac of um, curling. Mm. And I was like, there's no way he likes curling. I love this curling. Is, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Right after, like a month later, he's like telling me who mm -hmm. won the Briar Cup in yeah. one year. Because he, he actually read it and <laughs> like amazing. got into, <laughs> got into uh, curling. We, we would always like joke around and watch uh, TSN for like the hockey interviews because the... Um, as, as eloquent as Jonathan could be uh, on a microphone or in front of a camera, uh, it was funny to us how uh, ineloquent uh, some of the hockey players were. So we would laugh at like the interviews and that would be like, a, that's a big thing I remember. I think he gravitated towards the showmanship of sports, yeah. the, 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 the production, the, the looking at the camera or riling up a crowd and being yeah. able to like do that. He, he, that's what he liked out of, the, out of sports. Did he always want to work for a sports network like TSN? Was that always his early on? Yes, it very early yeah. on. I mean, I asked him when he was eight. I said, John, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, I want to be a sports reporter. That was it. And he never changed from that ever. You ever asked him that question? That's what he wanted to do. And that's what he was pursuing. When he was two and a half, and we have guests, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he would um, roll up a piece of paper, you remember that? Yeah. And he would interview all of them. Wow. Yes. Yeah can barely talk in diapers. Yes. <laughs> but he was ready to He know. was ready to interview, so he knew what he wanted from a very early age. It makes me sad, because not, not many people get to live out their dreams and actually pursue their dreams, and he was actually doing that. He didn't get a chance. Does that make it harder to swallow that this happened because he was destined for so much? Yes. But maybe he has accomplished all mm -hmm. that he needed to do. Now this could live on. Mm -hmm. and Someone might learn from that, and, you know, maybe he has. I know you guys are, um, the court case is ongoing right now. And there are two young men who are charged for committing this heinous crime. Both of them have pled not guilty. How do you feel about that? What they've done is they've taken a life and they've thrown away their own. Look at the path that they've chosen. They've thrown away all their promise, things that Jonathan no longer has. They've chosen to throw away with both hands. What does justice look like for you? For me, a big part is forgiveness, but there's, you must take responsibility for what you've done. Would you like to see a life sentence? Whatever it takes to make, to really correct them. 
Yes, maybe their brothers and sisters won't go that path. Maybe the community might shape better. When you guys kind of look back to that day in 2018, do you ever go like think in your head, like I wish there was something I could have done? Part of the 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 strangeness of this of this whole um, episode is realizing that it's as close to just an act of God uh, or like a a, a a disaster, a hurricane, or so, something that just we, you know, they didn't know each other. It wasn't like if Jonathan was nicer, it wasn't. It wouldn't be like if Jonathan, uh, you know, uh, didn't hang around with these people. It wasn't anything like that. It was just total strangers. So it was as much a a uh, a random act of violence as you're ever gonna get. Sometimes it makes me feel really hopeless and sometimes it makes me feel hopeful because the phrase you're not given uh tomorrow's not uh, guaranteed is means anything it's like this is the the prime example of that i would love to ask each of you what would you say to these two young men who are charged i think i would like since we were not there and we couldn't have been there for his last breath what did he say? Did he ask you not to? Did you still pull the trigger even when he said don't? What was his last word? Or if they even hear anything that he said? I don't know if I want to tell them anything. I just, I wouldn't want them to tell me, you know, why. Um, just say, look at your life. Look at the choices that you've made already. Look how disastrous they've been. And the very fact that you're still drawing breath means that you have more of an opportunity now than Jonathan has. So do something different with your life. I don't think anybody can ever be summed up into one word. But if there is one word that you feel like best describes Jonathan, what is that word for you? Smile. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Determined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So his warmth. Mm -hmm. His warmth. So Ms. Hazel. Mm -hmm. I know that you've come all the way from Jamaica to support your family. Why was that so important for you? Jonathan and myself, we're very close. Yeah. Very, very close. Like, on his birthday, I always text him. I call him first if I didn't get him. Mm -hmm. I would text him May 4th, maybe to you. Mm -hmm. And um, we have the standard going on. <laughs> I would sing for him on his birthday. What song would you sing? Happy birthday. Can you what drop song it for you us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Happy it. birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jonathan. Happy birthday to you. Oh. He would be the first person yeah. to call me on my birthday. Not my daughter, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jonathan. He would be the first to call me and say, Aunt, he's a happy birthday. Yeah. He was your favorite nephew. Well, she has hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm well, 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 well. <laughs> That's a hot one. Try to some riffs in here. <laughs> Mercy. When he was small and I said, he says, Auntie, I love you, I love you, I love you so much. And I would say, Jonathan, show me, how much do you love me? And he would say, from down here to the earth, way up to the sky. That was the extent of his love. And um, someday I cried. Someday I walk about in my house in Jamaica and I say, Jonathan, we'll never see this. That's the thing, it's like they, it's not, not that they just took away Jonathan, they took away like all the, all the things that are, that could have happened later, the yeah. potential obviously, but not just of him, but just like, you know, I remember, everybody remembers when the Raptors won. Yes. I cried, because like my brother wasn't there. Like I, I was screaming, I couldn't believe it. Or when, like, specifically, the, the I remember the moment very vividly when Kawhi hit the, the jumper. Yes. I'm screaming, and then I just start crying. And, it, and I was by myself, and he's not there. Like, yes. that would have been the perfect thing for him yeah. to see. But you know, been... you know what your mother was saying? She said that she knew for sure that the oh, Raptors he's... were going to take the championship <laughs> because Jonathan was there in the yeah. great beyond, yeah. yeah. making sure. She said, for yeah. sure, he's there going to win. That. And when they won, he yeah. said, you see, that's Jonathan. That's you know, I asked all your family members, what would you say to those two young men who are on trial right now? 
I don't know. But one thing I wish for them, mm -hmm. that they will be given a long sentence where they will have time to rehabilitate and they can come back out and be better persons and help their community. You're a good woman, because a lot of people would wish something totally different. Mm -hmm. There's one word. Yes. For Jonathan? Mm -hmm. What is that word for you? Positivity. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey BG Squad, thanks so much for checking out our channel and listen to this, we have more great content for you like this video right here and this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now and tap that notification bell.